everything old is new again. America's entertainment pop culture talk show. It may well possess a rudimentary intelligence. I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Felt a great disturbance in the force. Hello, I'm Mr. Ray. Come on, Mark, like a dog for me. Meet me. Where's the goodies? Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. I bet you wouldn't have done anything like this if Mom and Dad were here. You filthy criminal. Excuse me while I whip this out. Go ahead. Make my day. Here are your hosts, Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Look, Daddy, teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right. That's right. Not a boy clown. There we go. We're having some fun and experiencing a little bit of uh, the hereafter with George Anderson. Who want to get a reading? Go to georgeanderson.com. You can get a reading by phone. You don't need to be in the, uh, in the in person to do that. Further, there are books on Amazon.com that give you uh, readings, give you interpretation of readings, gives you interpretation of the life hereafter uh, through George's eyes. Uh, We're not forgotten, and, and many other books. Uh, we don't die. Uh, Lessons from the light, and the latest, of course, life between heaven and earth. You're listening. Everything old is new again. David Cohen, are you ready for your reading? You've been waiting patiently. Yes. All right. Yes, so, uh, next voice you hear will be George, and we're uh, listening and eavesdropping on David Cohen's reading right here on Everything Old is New Again. Uh, a male came forward, so I take you understand, yes? Yes. All right. I don't want to make them think I'm ignoring them. There are two males around you, and I'm not trying to be a wise guy. I'm sure they've passed on, but two males claim to be granddads. Yes. Whoever, there's people around you, they're taking me, but they're taking me back to a time where people in your family would have been more devout. Yes. You know, again, great grandparents, you know, people, I feel like, um, I feel like I'm in the, like the 20th, 19th century and a male does come as dad. Understood. Hmm. Actually, no, your dad is still here. Right. Also, did hear the name Rose, understood? No. Are you sure? Even if it's somebody you didn't know. I knew of one a long time ago. Family or? Friend. But passed on. Or you just don't know. know. Oh, all right. Then I'm going to have to assume a question mark. Somebody came around you and claimed the name Rose, but she does seem passed on, and she also spoke about knowing your family. Uh, whoever this is doesn't expect recognition, but did hear what sounded like the name Claire or Clara. Understood? Yes. But passed on? Yes. Oh, good. Well, you f- you didn't fulfill your own prophecy. <laughs> she came around me and she said, I don't think I'm going to be remembered. So I was like, well, what do you want me to do? Should I say it or not? And I said, well, we haven't got anything to use. Actually, Clara? She preceded me, I mean, before I was born. Yeah, okay, yeah. because... She um, does come as family. Yes. And did speak another language, yes? Yes. Don't correct me. It's just that her name was said, she didn't sound like I'd, I'd say Clara. It sounded like she was saying Clara. It was said differently. Also, did hear the name Sarah, too. Understood? It sounded like Sarah or Sadie. If you're not sure, I'm going to leave that with you. Sadie. It, yeah. But passed on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if this is, and don't tell me, I don't know if it's a brother or brother-in-law, but a feeling of a little gap of communication. Yes. With, again, don't correct me, either a brother or a brother-in-law. So it felt to me from them that there was a loss, but it was more in an emotional sense. Understood? Yes. Which would tell me a death emotionally. So apparently this didn't happen last week. Correct. They throw in the towel. Apparently the way it is, and I don't see any major changes anytime soon. Probably. Yeah. Right. I think you better get used to it. Yes. (laughs) It's the way it is. It just seems business as usual. You know, whatever damage that was done has been done and seems to like hang but again either with a brother or brother-in-law you might want to keep this under your hat there may be some jealousy there because there is like maybe of the individual toward you because i feel it's more pointed at you than you pointing it at someone else there's some 
jealousy or resentment. And again, it goes back. And it's not as though you haven't tried to get closer. Right. And it just doesn't work. The damage is done. You might also feel that individual kind of digs you at times, understood? Mm -hmm. And you know, the worst part about it is you don't want to take it as a dig, but you're not sure. Understood? Yes. Like, am I being digged or is it really you're just kidding around? It kind of comes across as a dig. Right. Um, whoever this is doesn't expect recognition, but did hear the name Francine. Your mom was brought up. It's just that the person could also be known as Fran or like Fanny. It, okay. I probably am not hitting the home run, but I keep getting the feeling I'm in the ballpark. Um, also, I can't remember. I thought I said this. Also heard the name Ruth. Understood? Yes. But passed on? Yes. Oh, good. I, no, I guess I didn't. I guess I heard it and forgot about it. Something else caught my attention. Passed kind of young. If she yes. was less than 70, I'd consider yes. her young. Mm -hmm. Because she doesn't come across as an elderly person right. when she passes. And at times, you might find this surprising, at times does tell me around you very much like as a guardian angel. Again, not the end of the world, but in regards with family, things could be closer. It, they're not saying you're a traitor, but they keep showing me Benedict Arnold. That's symbolic <laughs> of, for me, that wow. represents the man without a country. Okay. That at times, <laughs> you may feel isolated. Understood? Yes. Sad to say, you might feel kind of like the oddball. Not that you are. Right. Like, I mean, they've told me I'm an oddball, but I see it as a compliment. <laughs> it's just that, again, like, at times you might feel your family's a little bit of the Titanic, every man for himself. Yes. You know, like, they're there, they're not there. Right. And that's why they gave me the impression in the beginning, I was trying to figure out, are these people passed on or are they still here? And that's why I was glad your grandparents came to me and said, his... Immediate family people are here, your parents and whoever, but there's gaps where, again, not that they, but there's emotional death, understood? Mm -hmm. It's not, yeah, because yeah, sadly there is jealousy directed at you. Hmm. You might have wondered if that's true and it's jealousy and resentment definitely again without telling me which one a brother brother-in-law the grass is greener in your yard or so they think it is yeah definitely your family uh, you know not that they are but like they're scattered understood yes they're like mm -hmm. gypsies it's you know it's not leave it to beaver right I mean, your upbringing wasn't the end of the world, but it wasn't something I'd want to write home about either. Understood? It's. It seems you came from. I don't. I don't think I'd consider it dysfunctional. Understood? Right. It. It wasn't dysfunctional, but it wasn't as close as it could have been. That's why I'm kind of in no man's land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm neither here nor there. I don't know how to make up my mind on it. It's just, as they tell me, it's just your family is just family, like on paper. You definitely are a sensitive guy, which is an admirable trait, but sometimes be careful it doesn't become a problem where things can bug you more than they should because as your grandparents say, you're inclined to kind of suffer in silence, as they say. They keep showing me the beginning of the opening lines of the book, A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And that might describe, in the nutshell, how your life is presently. I mean, you yourself seem to have pretty much a normal American life. Right. You know, yourself, your own family, whatever. It, it, that seems okay. Outskirts are where I see the ripples in the water, where... 
again, things. But also, too, as, as your grandmother states, and there's nothing wrong with this, there is a good part of you, really, that doesn't care. Understood? Yes. <laughs> you know, and again, nothing wrong with that. You know, that as long as you and your family are okay, you're all right. The outskirts, you really don't care. Understood? Yes. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, everybody's entitled to how they feel. You know, family is an accident of nature. We're here on Everything Old is New again, enjoying some time with George Anderson. If anyone want to and set up your own uh, reading, go to georgeanderson.com. Georgeanderson.com. You don't have to be in the state of New York. You can uh, do this over the telephone because we're doing it right here and uh, live and in person. On Everything Old is New again, we'll be back right after this. You're listening to Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. You're back on Everything Old is New Again. This is Douglas Viviani here with David Cohen and uh, George Anderson. We Did hear it sounded like the name Morris? Understood? <laughs> yes. But passed on? Oh, yeah. Now, first name, though. Oh, Sorry? First name? First name. Yeah, yeah. okay, because I'm yeah. saying, wait a minute, is that a last name or first name? And he said first name. Who does come to you in a fatherly manner. Yes. Uncle, granddad, you don't have to tell me. Mm -hmm. Certainly would know your folks. Yeah, because you kind of joke, tell your parents you've heard from me. would love to see how they react. <laughs> yes, a lot of these people were, how do I explain it? In the past, they would have been more devout. Yes. Or more temple goers. Right. Or something. They were more religious in the past. Where you you're, you didn't grow up in a super duper religious home, correct? But yeah. you're kind of lucky. <laughs> Somebody in the background, they're definitely speaking. Don't help me. I take it you're of Jewish roots, because I saw the Star yes. of David over your head. It speaks for itself. <laughs> um, but the thing is, people did speak Yiddish or some Slavic like language at one time. And again, I'm going back like. Um, to like Eastern Europe, Russia, sure, you know, where people would have been more devout. It's just that, again, the people I see behind you come from the past. Their heads would be covered, or they'd wear the yarmulke, they'd have those, um, where they wear the strings. Right, the talus. Sure. Yeah, I don't know what they call yeah. them, the black and white. You know, they just mm -hmm. would, I saw them on the street, I'd say, they, you know, it's obvious they're Jews. Right. Where your family now would be more agnostic atheist, you know, yep. probably more atheist, or at least questioning atheists. Right. You know, um, where the people in the past might have believed in an afterlife, people now would, their attitude would be, we'll find out when we're dead. I'm sure there is. There, I also did hear the name Joe or Joseph. does seem passed on. To me, it's a relatively common name. There has to be. Yes. Yep. You know, I can't fight the man right. on that. In other words, you would have still had relatives back there. Oh, yes. Yeah, because yeah. sure. definitely people are giving me the impression, you know, they could have been killed in the Holocaust. Sure. Or, yeah, because yeah. I saw individuals around you with those uniforms on. Hmm. And I'm a big World War II fan, so I know what that means. Yeah, definitely had family that that was were lost exterminated. In the yeah, because yes. there's people around you telling me that that they were arrested and exterminated. Yeah, because there are Russian roots. Yes. Yes. Because I did see the last Tsar of Russia over your head, so that would be my symbol. There were, you know, somebody spoke Russian, Yiddish, the Russian roots. Did you hear the name Ben? <laughs> Yes. Who actually comes very close to you and reports many times being around you very much like as a guardian angel. He must have been, you must have known him. Yes. And he must have been very proud of you because he put the golden apple over your head. Maybe you want to keep it under your hat, but I think you were probably his favorite. Does thank you that you have prayed for him in your own way. Right. Would certainly ask that it please continue. Funny, thought I heard the name, I don't think this is right, thought I heard the name Connie? Not there, but sure. Significant? Yes. Oh, okay. Someone close to her passed on? Yes. Probably. You know, yes. somebody. Let me just, let me start over again. I heard somebody from over there call out the name Connie. It can be somebody here as long as they're significant. 
and she would be significant to you family wise. Yes. I take it. Because right. like her grandparents, you know, people there call the name. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely people there calling to Connie. So obviously people close to her that's passed on. Okay. You know, and if you think she could deal with this, obviously calling out to her. I know you're David, but there is one passed on, yes? Sure. Yeah, because somebody just told me you're not the only one. Like, I'm right. not the only George in my family. Right. But somebody came forward and said, same name as you. That obviously you were named after or named in memory of. Right. You know, that sort of thing. If you remember this, I'll be shocked. I heard the name Izzy or Isidore. Understood. That I'm mm -hmm. going to leave with you. Yeah. He didn't really expect you to. That's why I said I'd be shocked if you said okay. yes. But claimed. All in all, though, Ben gives me the impression you pretty much have a normal American life. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, glad to be able to say. Again, this is not being done for a religious purpose, but uh, I see the Holy Ghost over your head, the Holy Spirit, which represent bless. Your own life, you can't complain about. True. I'm sure you have ups and downs. Everybody does. But all in all, more blessed as opposed to not. Right. Also, don't help me. Thought I heard the name Miriam or Marion. Sure. But passed on? Yes. Oh, okay. I don't know if the name is wrong or not, but I know I'm in the ballpark because she kind of came as Mary, but then told me to change it. She told me to make it more Hebrewish, and that's what made me think more probably Miriam or Marion. Both. No, that's probably why that I'm hearing both Miriam and Mar Marion and kind of kidding about your parents again. Tell me for from us. Love to see how they react. Yeah, because one thing about your Outer Bank family, they're set in their ways. Yes. Also, did you hear the name Jules? Jules or Julian? Julius, yes. But passed on? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. I'm, again, I thought he said Jules first. Um... And then he said, no, he says, it's off. And I'm like, are you trying to say Julian? And then I just realized probably why I was saying Caesar. He was Julius Caesar. <laughs> Duh. Went right over my head, Julius. But again, it's not like his name was Fred. So right, he right. was in the ballpark, even if so. But him passed on too, and certainly comes as family. Yes, he brings up, not that they're insulted, but... You know, your outer family would believe you're dead, you're dead. They, you know, wouldn't believe they're alive somewhere else. And they probably wouldn't have believed that when they were here. But you have to learn it for yourself. Okay. So they're like, yeah, okay, someday you'll find out. <laughs> Certainly not going to lose sleep over it. But I know because we're limited because they tell us, tell me that they're going to have to pull back. But definitely Benny, big time around you, like as a guardian angel. I mean, you must have been... If, I'm just saying this. If he's the grandpa, he, you must have been grandpa's boy, because yeah. that's very evident from him. Just don't advertise it. Because, <laughs> well, he's right. He says, you know, families, they can be piss pots. Right. All right, but he pulls back with so many of the other people, certainly asks that you remember to pray for them, and there they go. Oh, I just realized, too, he's right. Um, Benny also wished you a happy new year, because today... Right. Yeah, that's, that's Rosh Hashanah. Rosh yeah. Hashanah. And certainly did also request, and they're not, they're not gung-ho Jews, but also brought up praying for them on Yom Kippur because I, I believe that's the day when the Jewish people pray for the so-called dead. You sure. know, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with observing the tr that tradition. Right. But yeah, he definitely is big time around you. That's for sure. All right, but with that, they tell me they're going to pull back, sign off, and there they go. Very good. Okay. Um, there we go. Quite an experience. We were, we'll uh, debrief uh, <laughs> uh, about that, but we're very uh, happy to have had George Anderson uh, spending so much time with us on everything old is new again to uh, experience his gift and and uh, and listen. If you if you didn't get an opportunity to have a reading, you can if you'd like at georgeanderson.com. You can experience other readings as we did through his many books. Uh, you can also see some interpretation of the readings uh, and what happened with other you know other people. 
people's readings through these books. They're tremendous, uh, good reading, uh, uh, and really will open your mind to uh, uh, to other possibilities. So uh, again, Amazon.com, you can find all those books. Uh, they're, they're, We're Not Forgotten and uh, Lessons from the Light, which I really enjoyed, and uh, Life Between Heaven and Earth. And there are so many others. We don't die. Uh, also, uh, George Anderson is is now turning his talents to the um, to the artistic world. Mm -hmm. And how would we define your your work on eBay? Is it paintings? Is it uh, tile work or something else? Um, it is. Um, the funny thing about it is when you know, because you know, I went to Catholic school for twelve years. The funny thing about it is. I never liked geometry, but was always fascinated by the shapes and wished I could figure out the problems as other students were able to. But I will do it on art, will do works on art paper, art boards, on canvases. The majority of the background would be geometric and, um, you know, I love bold, bright colors, so, you know, we'll call them in. I'll use nail polish to mm. fill them in. Um, and I also like to give things from nostalgia a new life. So um, we'll use, sometimes, you know, I might use a religious holy picture. Sometimes I may use um, a lace piece or a swap card or appliques, you know, it's... I'm not saying this out of conceit, but it definitely is different. And varied. It sounds different and yeah, varied. Yeah, vary. it varies. Because I'll always get, like, I'll see something like, oh, that would be an inspiration. And have certainly have sold a number of pieces over the last few years. And with every piece, there's a signature, of course. Oh, like yeah. That. Always sign it as an original, signed by me with the title and so forth. And... um who knows, you know? Maybe after I'm dead and thought of no more. It'll well, it, it'll make us continue to think of you, and, and cer certainly we are uh, going to uh, retain these shows in our archives, and as long as the Internet's alive, we'll all be alive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but let's put it this way, uh, for right now, we're very happy to have had you and most appreciative. Thank you so much, oh, George thank Anderson. You kindly thank you, George. To both really of you. It. Thank you kindly. GeorgeAnderson.com. And uh, and feel free to to visit him uh, through through that means uh, and schedule an appointment because it's it's worthwhile. It'll it'll open your mind to infinite possibilities. This thing we'll be back and everything old again. Time, George, thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, what I might end up doing is You're listening to Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. All right, we're back on Everything Old is New Again, and uh, we have time traveled a little bit. We are one week from that last reading that we had and heard with David Cohen and George Anderson. I figured we would give it a week's time because that was a rather uh, long and detailed reading from apparently uh, approximately 14 to 16 people that surrounded David Cohen during the reading, and, and George came up with names. So I figured we'd give it some time. I think, it, David, did you recognize 100% of the names right off the bat, or is not, this week help to kind of review? Not right off the bat. So the week helped me because I went back to my parents and, and ran some of the names back then, back uh, or through them. Right. Names that I didn't you know, immediately recognize. So, and, uh, yeah, the results are pretty startling. Yeah, I'm going to uh, interrupt, and I'm going to kind of try to be organized if we can, because there's so many names. I'm going to yeah. go through one at a time, and let's see what he did here. And I think this is, to me, this I have a healthy level of skepticism, but when you hear names like this, and if, we'll see, he got 16 out of 16 or a majority of the names right, that he's presenting messages. There's also some messages there, too, we we'll talk about after that. Right. Um, but the foundation is if he's getting names correct, and a large number of them, then that lends to me certainly some credibility to what the heck is going on here. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. You know? So let's see if that if that happened. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's see. On everything old is new again. There was a rose first one. Yeah, that was one of the names I didn't immediately recognize. I thought maybe it was an old neighbor of ours, but... But I spoke with my wife, and 
uh, her aunt passed away about a month ago, and she was known by a nickname, Such. What I didn't know was her actual name is Rose. Wow. So that kind of, I like, the goosebumps started appearing on my arms. And, yeah. <laughs> right off the bat. So there's, you know, it's, it's some of them are common names, but now let's see how this adds up. If there's a commonality, if he's right. So there's one right. Let's put it that way, right off the bat, right? Then there was a Clara, he said, with an accent. He was trying to pre- present some kind of an accent. He's not a linguist, but yeah. he was saying it came through with an accent. So did that make any sense? It did. And when I heard it, it made sense because uh, it was the name of one of my great grandmothers. Oh, wow. Yeah. And did she have an accent? Yes, because a lot of my relatives, especially my great-grandparents, had immigrated from Eastern European countries, and they spoke Yiddish, so, so a lot of them oh, did so have So he did mention accent. Yiddish, which, you know, Cohen is the Jewish last name. I think that would be a pretty obvious common right. thing to say. But he did also mention Russian at some point, and, and I, I guess it's kind of common, but not really. It, it, it was I right about that? I'm mean, half my family is from Russia. Yeah. So, yeah, my entire, my dad's side of the family all are from Russia. Just as a side note, do you still have people in Russia right now? I don't know. Yeah. No, no. Okay. Um, and then there's... Uh, there was something called a pogrom, <laughs> yeah, Doug, so they all came over here. No no one hung out. Hey, you know, it's not so bad here, actually. You know, the, the gas. It's fine. We made it. Well, wait a minute. I, I, actually, I don't even know. I, it's a word that I've never heard of before, so that's, to tell me what you're saying. Well, the, in, in Russia back... You know, before World War II, they started these, I mean, they were basically like concentration camps. Um, they were called pogroms, and, and Jews were... Well, see, you know, I, I'm glad you mentioned that, because yeah. I didn't have any idea. Now, that was before World War II, and he mentioned, again, it's a kind of a common thing, but he did mention there was a gap, and there was some, I don't know if you said or he said something about a Holocaust of, of that nature. Yeah, he did mention Holocaust um, as well. So when you acknowledge that, you weren't acknowledging World War II, you acknowledging what we just said, or both, or what? Both. Okay. Yeah, I mean, wow. yeah, the, a lot of my Russian, my family who came over from Russia came over because of the oppression and, and the programs had started, so they started immigrating here to the States. And not to get political, but I, that's so strange that I'm this age and I've never heard that, and I'm wondering why they don't teach that. Everything old is new again. There you go. There you we go. could do a show on that. Well, hopefully uh, it's not new again. But, right. But, but, <laughs> well, but you learn something. So but it's that's important good. to learn from stuff like that, and right. it's not just happened to World War II. It happens to this day and other, whatever. We can go off. Sure. Off on that, but it's just right. interesting. Okay, and then you've got um, Sarah or Sadie. Yes, yeah, Sarah uh, was also a relative on my mother's side um, who passed away a long time ago, probably around the time I was born. Interesting. Okay, and then Francis or Fran, he was trying to... Well, that him. was weird. My, my mom's name, my, she's still alive, um, but a lot of these were her relatives. Right. Her name is Fern. So he kept, he kept saying, yes. like, he, he wasn't sure what the name was that was being said. That's why he kept saying Fran, Francis. So it's it's entirely understandable if someone was saying Fern to him and he just didn't understand. Because Fern is not a common name. Right, right. right. So and he was saying was, someone was calling out or someone was there with that. That's exactly. interesting. Uh, and then there was a Ruth who died young? Yeah, I don't know how young she really was, but... Uh, you know, on my dad's side, I think his, his grandmother. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then a Morris in a fatherly manner came forward? Morris uh, was the, the the proper name of my dad's, my grandfather. He was named as Monty. We called him Monty. I called him Grandpa. But people knew him as Monty, but his, his name was actually Morris. Wow. So that was my grandfather. And you obviously knew him. Oh, very well. Um, sure. So therefore, as a fatherly type of figure, kind of yes. makes sense in a way. Joe or Joseph, again, he said it was so common, but still. I mean, it, Yeah, I mean, there was when I was younger, there was a neighbor of my grandparents. I was over my grandparents a lot. And they had a na- neighbors, Joe and Lily. And I hung out with Joe and Lily a lot, too. So, you know, it, that, it's, it's possible. It's possible. He does, he does say, and it's easy out, but I think it's... It's legit in this case that, you know, if someone is close to their family, it doesn't have to be by blood. He's said right. that many times. Right. Uh, then there was interesting one, uh, someone that I believe this is sort of a guardian angel and uh, and really close with you, a, a Ben. Right. So that's my, my, f- my mother's uh, father. My grandfather, Ben, passed away when I was about 10 years old, um, but was, you know... I was his favorite. He was my favorite. We always hung out together, and he left a real deep, you know, imprint on my life and my interest today. And uh, I named my son after him. And that's incredible that, you know, I'm getting, he got a lot of names and doing pretty good so far. But the other side of the fence is that he, oh, he picked this person out out of all the names so far to say, Guardian Angel, very close, and so forth. Yeah, now, I mean, 
I was sitting next to him, and I think when he said, Ben, you saw it too, I started to get a little emotional. Right. Like, you probably saw the shock on my face. Right. So it's very possible he just picked up on a, on a visual cue from me and went with it. Right. So, right. Uh, you know, that, that I'm like, okay, I probably would have done the same thing. Right. If I see something hit someone, I'm like... Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's also, <laughs> yeah, he's the most important person in your life. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm, that's what he's saying. We, exactly. We could, and that's the skepticism comes forward. But it's amazing when, when you hear, okay, how about Connie? So that was really strange. Now, Connie is the uh, name of my, my mother-in-law. And she's still alive. But she lost her mother a couple of years ago. So the fact that someone was saying the name Connie. And remember, they were telling, he said that they were saying, Say Connie, because he was trying to say it was a Constance. He wanted Constance, to say Constance, and right. I said say Connie, and that's how I know my mother-in-law. She's Connie. And so, he, they even said, "Don't say Constance. Don't formalize it. Right. It's Connie." Right. That's kind of you know. It's, it's weird. It's, it's Her name is Concetta, uh, but right, Connie. All right. How about uh, David? David is my great grandfather, who I was named after. So that that made sense also. And Isidore. Isidore, I didn't, I didn't get right away, and then I spoke with my dad, and he said, "Yeah, Isidore was the name of his one of his uncles." Wow! Yeah. And then there was Miriam or uh, Mary. He started to say Mary, and then he said Marion, right. Miriam, and uh, Miriam was my grandmother, and that's Ben's wife. So Ben right. and Miriam were my grandparents on my mom's side. I was very close with both of them, uh, but also I also had a, a great aunt, Marion. So both names. Were relevant. And how about this Julius? Julius, Julius I had Caesar. a great uncle Julius as well. And you knew him? I did. Yes, I remember him well. So there were two names, Abby or Abby and uh, or Abe and Sam, that we spoke off the air that I just want to cut through the chase. That you, they didn't really acknowledge those. No, no. But then again, you know, I didn't ask my parents about those names, okay. actually. So, yeah, it's possible, but no. Uh, let's assume no. We can right. come back and revisit, but let's assume no. That's 14 out of 16 names exactly that he was able to pinpoint right and uh, now one can argue okay he knew i'm jewish of course i don't think he could have googled my name and looked all this up in advance because there's a million david cohen right right? um nor did he know beforehand that he was going to do a reading for me right that was not scheduled yeah let's be clear about that we had the contest and people call in we had the person for that segment of your reading uh bailed out on us Right. Uh, last minute. Right. For whatever reason, they, they couldn't do it. So we had you fill in. So he could have said, all right, let me just pick a lot of these biblical names from the Old Testament. And, you know, nine out of ten, I'm sure I'm going to hit. But there were, for my for me, it was too many. I mean, he got too many right for me just to kind of write this whole thing off. And uh, I, I have to believe there's some credibility here. And we'll leave that for a moment. We're going to come back with Everything Old is New Again with David Cohen to debrief. There's some more to talk about because this was a long and detailed reading on Everything Old is New Again. We are the lucky ones. Now, back to America's entertainment pop culture talk show, Everything Old is New Again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. All right, we're back, and everything old is new again. To briefing on David Cohen's reading with uh, George Anderson, which just to recap was fourteen out of sixteen names right on the button, um, and and there were some messages that were given too. But I just wanted to recap, David, as you came into this experience. Let's be clear: where were you coming from in terms of your belief, either in the hereafter or in what George could do, or both? I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I I wanted to believe this. Who who doesn't want to believe that, Good right? Point, who yes. doesn't want to believe that 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 loved ones who've passed away can actually communicate you, with you? And and I was like anticipating, and I was like, wow, I hope, I really hope this happens, you know? Right. right. But you know, the the logical side of my brain was, I can honestly say, one hundred percent convinced that this was complete BS. Right. And, so. and as you came in, and, and you said to me afterwards, you, there was some point you were saying to yourself, ah, you know what, man, you were sort of like uh, losing your zest for it and saying, ah, I don't, maybe not do this or, you know. And, yeah. You know. I, I was like, why, why waste his time? Why waste my time? I don't really believe it. And then it. the reading happened. And then right. talk about when the name Ben came up for you. That was probably name number eight that came up, uh, seven actually, in the list. And he was hitting like six out of, oh, seven he, out of seven. At well, that when point. he said, I think one of the first names he said was Morris, right? right? So Morris is not a common name. 
name. Let let me get that out there, right? So right. even with going back to bi- biblical times, pulling these names, up, Morris is not in there anywhere, right? And that's my one of my grandfather's names. So when he said Morris, that got my attention immediately. Like, right. wow, that how does he know that? Right. And then and also just a side note, Morris was also a very beloved neighbor of ours who taught me how to read Hebrew and prepared me for my bar mitzvah. And Morris was kind of a character. So when he said, and Morris says, tell your parents... Uh, that they that they get a kick out of knowing that I was here and spoke. So that could have either been my grandfather, or it could have been this very beloved neighbor of ours. But either way, uncommon name. Where did he get it from? Immediately got my attention. And then when he talked about Benjamin Ben, uh, yeah, you saw me. I think yeah. my eyes started to water because I'm like. Oh my God! Like what? How did? What? Huh? Huh? And think about it. Play it. Put it just to go back, and you can hear it again. You know, on everything old is new again. Dot biz. Um, that's number number eight out of eight. He hit for you. So now it's really starting to sink in yeah. at that point. And he hit somebody really significant in your life. And if I would have known yeah. that Rose was the name, because that was one of the first names he said too, yeah. was the name of of my wife's aunt who recently passed away. You know, the real name, uh, that I, man, I would have like, right. I, oh, might have, right. I might have stopped it. I might have said, you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I believe you. Stop talking to me. I need to go and like rethink all of reality in my entire life. So okay? now, now, based upon exactly all of the, all of these names, now uh, thinking back on it, you were saying in the last section that it lends cer- certainly in my mind and, and I think in yours credibility to what this man is doing. Yes. I, there's no way that this guy just completely guessed right on so many names. And in addition, uh, you know, some of the stories he was telling about what they were saying about my relationship with my family right. and my relationship with my faith uh, was like spot on. It was right. scary. Right. It was scary. And he was saying how they were more, just to refresh, they were more devout and your family and so forth now agnostic not, not or so much, atheist right. or whatever. And, um, and then the, the, uh, the, relationship with a brother or a brother-in-law i won't go into details but but, yeah but i mean just you have to go to detail but what was that all about it was about uh well i have two brothers i'm closer with one than the other and and the other brother um you know there's there is a bit of a relationship there but you know like he said i think he said something about emotionally it was not a strong relationship, right. and and that's a hundred percent correct. And he's talking about like an emotional loss, uh, emotional loss. He was saying yes, uh, or death in, in that relationship, and and yeah, you know that it's true. So like I, you know now when you hear the names and now you hear this like like I, lots of families have problems, but lots of families don't have problems specifically right. with brothers. You didn't even know you had a brother, right? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he and, said brother and brother in law. So right. I guess he was covering himself a little bit, but yeah. I mean, right. He could have said sister. He could have said mother, father. How did he know brother? Exactly. Right? How did and he know that, even had brothers? Right. And that, and that it was looking like he was saying there was, a, you know, we don't think it did, but the, that there were problems, difficulties, emotional loss, whatever. And this kind of stuff resonated with you. Whatever the message yes. was, resonated and certainly made sense to you that, wait a minute. I don't know. If he would have said it to me, it doesn't make it. It would, wouldn't work. Right. And right. lots of people, it wouldn't work. So you can't just like guess stuff like that on national radio and say, I'm going to make this up and I'm going to say to David that he's having a problem with his family and specifically his brother. Like, you, we wouldn't, would you take that chance? And the odds are so low that you'd hit that social problem on the radio. I have to say again, with the names and that, it really it runs chills up your spine in a way like there's something going on here. Right. Right. And even he says, listen, I don't know what it is. I profess and I think that I'm speaking to the hereafter. I'll undergo any scientific research. He even says, you know, I'll find out or, or we'll find out later what this is. I believe what this is. But he's even has a healthy level of skepticism, which brings you down or brings him down to a level of understanding of a regular guy. Just like this is what's happening. And you want me to read to a reading? I'm, re- I'm, I'm going to roll the dice here with you. But this is what I'm I think is what's happening. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he's successful enough where he's he's done it for so many years and so many people you know, believe in what he does. And yeah, there's a large degree, I, I get it, right? There's a large degree of people wanting to believe it yes. and, and making what he says work for their situation, making it fit into their lives so that, that it's believable, right? But I'm, you know, look, 
I, I'm a sort of cold, hard facts kind of guy. So what did he say? Like 16 names? Yeah. He hit 14. I didn't even ask about the other two. So <laughs> m- maybe he's 100% correct, correct as far as I know. Yeah. But for me, 14 out of 16 names, he's pulling out of thin air. He's He said a couple of things about my relationship with faith and family that were spot on. Right. Uh, to me, that's enough for me to say there's something there. Right. And further, which of these people were more it's not really nice to say but you know in his way more significant impact on your life than others you know right. ben clearly had an impact on you and you said there was a you know that business but again he he came across with that uh right off the bat right yeah so i'm uh i'm a believer man so yep. there you go so uh i think it was worthwhile visit i think yours is a great ending to this We'll call it an experiment. I don't think it really is experiment at the 30 years, so <laughs> yeah. I think he's, it was experiment for us. I think it's pretty interesting stuff. I think you, at the very least as a listener of this show, no, we just lay out the truth. We lay in it right out, we, you know, one way or the other. Um, what's what's happening we didn't know what's going to happen where this was going to go but now after seven i'm sorry after nine readings you hear at least seven of them were spot on Mm -hmm. as we're talking about here with these debriefs and the other two weren't bad but you know they my my relatives were correct but they didn't have a whole lot to say to me (laughs) so i don't know what that's about but you know like uh he got as if you hear back the first show he got my grandmother's circumstances and he got my godmother's name correct it's the only name that he really came out with for me um but one out of one with me uh so that right. was pretty uh i'm sorry one out of two he came up with another name that i didn't didn't come through with but so one out of two but it was it it wasn't you know horrible but on the face of this when you see seven out of nine really strong readings re- just like yours where you can't explain where these names are coming from and the names are he's like 90 percent on these names yeah uh and i don't think i know all my relatives names uh, so and so forth if, you know so i don't know it, it's it's something to think about i enjoyed it i i think that um it, it's great to believe and religion's there for a reason all of all of our civilizations have had that some look or another to the hereafter and what's up and what's going on. So maybe this is a little bit of peek into it and give us a little icing on the cake or maybe food for thought at the very least. Yep. No, I totally agree. So, all right. Yep. We'll be back on Everything Old is New again next week to continue with, uh, I guess, the more mundane uh, pop culture references and uh, into the world of entertainment. Yeah, maybe, to, back to the living right. next time. Right? But maybe, you know, we've had uh, that, that uh, writer on, uh, Carrie Brodsky. Right. Right. And she uh, was a ghost hunter, and she was saying that there are sometimes around us and also maybe we're maybe yeah, we should uh, have her back on now. Exactly, <laughs> she's got a new book out. The other thing is maybe our listenership is more than we think. Maybe we've got so, we're really good with the hereafter. Maybe we've got a lot of the souls listening to us uh, as we proceed. Yeah, maybe these people think we're, we're, our show is so boring that we're actually dead, and that's why they're listening. Well, the reverse. We might be the biggest show in heaven that exists. <laughs> Or the hereafter. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. And everything else to do again, right? <laughs> Some fun and, uh, and and thrills with the world. George Anderson, feel free to take a look at his website, georgeanderson.com. Georgeanderson.com. You'll learn more about what's going on and where you can get some more information, books, resources on this whole topic. And on back, everything else to do again.